Good afternoon, everybody, and um, thank you for uh, for the invitation to uh, to speak at this uh, honourable event. Um, I am um, Oliver Vartno, and I present an IT company uh, that um, uh, comes from Estonia and that has done a lot of uh, a lot of the work here in Estonia on the digital identity ecosystem. Um, but I'm not going to talk about Estonia too much. Uh, uh, rather, I would like to maybe discuss on three uh, key issues. Uh, first of all, about the benefits of an electronic identity ecosystem. Secondly, um, about the competition and the landscape uh, that we have in Europe, but also globally uh, in the in the electronic identity domain, and thirdly, uh, maybe a little bit about technology as well, and what are the kind of key characteristics that we uh, that we need to uh, that we need to address when uh, when deploying a, a secure digital identity in Europe. So first of all, first of all, about the benefits. Um, uh, it is quite obvious um, that um, uh, one cannot really offer any uh, digital services or any services on the cyberspace without a strong digital identity. Um, when we have deployed, uh, when, when we look at the story of the Estonian e-government or when where we have deployed our technologies, Estonian technologies to other countries, we always uh, or we mostly start uh, with the issue of digital identity. How can we authenticate people in the cyberspace in order to offer them services? Everything, all uh, all services, public services, are connected uh, to this strong digital identity. Think about electronic voting. One cannot vote uh, online when when you really don't know who's behind the identity that is voting. How can one offer uh, social security benefits online without uh, identifying a, a person online? But also bear in mind. Uh, the fact that actually um, a citizen on average uh, interacts with the government maybe twice a year, maybe three times a year, maybe four times a year. But mostly uh, a citizen actually talks to the private sector uh, to by accessing its um, banking, online banking system or telco system or paying electricity bills, etc., etc. So it is really key actually to enable uh, also private sector to be part of that uh, part of that formula. Andros, uh, Mr. Einzip uh, mentioned uh, that Estonia has um, saved 2% of GDP uh, because of the fact that we have a digital identity. We don't have uh, uh, trolleys going around uh, with contracts uh, between companies. When I, when I sign something, when I win a procurement here in Estonia, I do everything online. There is a huge, um, there is a huge social, uh, societal benefit because of that. And finally, let's not for, forget about the COVID crisis. We have been in lockdowns in Europe, uh, but we need to offer services. We need to reach uh, our people when they are home. And digital services is definitely the best way uh, reaching these people, providing them um, the services that are needed. A little bit about competition and landscape. Um, Mr. Einzip also mentioned that the competition is fierce. Um, there is a huge push, actually, to use Facebook, Google, Microsoft authentication technologies or Adobe's digital signature technologies. Um, why? Because they're widespread and they're convenient. Europe is really kind of lagging behind. Um, and soon, I fear that we will be in a situation where we have with our cloud technologies today, Europe doesn't have a cloud offering. Uh, Commission is putting together something like uh, Gaia X with member states, but we are about five, ten years late actually doing that. And I think in in the domain of digital identity, we have this momentum, and we have to use this momentum. Also, um, 
European digital identity, we have, it's, a, it's a very, very challenging task. Bear in mind, Estonia doesn't want a European digital identity. Estonia has its own digital identity. So how we can bridge all these identities together, how we can make them interact together so that, uh, so that all interests are covered. Um, this is a hugely challenging task that the European Commission uh, should, lay, should lead and, and, and really provide a solution that takes care of all the interests. Finally, about technology couple of observations. We have actually quite good ecosystems in Europe that are working. Leaving Estonia aside, we have a bank ID in Scandinavia, we have a, a digital identity in Denmark, uh, we have something in Portugal, Germany, etc., etc. My message is that we should actually study these ecosystems that work, uh, that work and, and basically take the lessons learned from there and try to replicate these around Europe. We have, we have existing technologies that work very, very well. We don't need another European Horizon project that tries to in, invent a new uh, electronic identity technology. I think we have, we have enough. We have to, we have to choose and, and, and really you know, go behind one or two technologies and really endorse them in, in Europe. In regards to ADAS, ADAS directive is um, is very or is mostly uh, public sector specific and very certification heavy. Bearing in mind that there are problems with certification, there are costs with certification. Certification doesn't always bring security, um, but we have to look at also. I think the wider scope of the electronic identity ecosystem, uh, meaning enrollment in the electronic identity scheme, and also how do we engage with the private sector? How do we actually get that private sector pull in order to, to, um, to implement the digital identity? And finally, issues like when we look at technology, issues like privacy, convenience, transparency, control security. We have to find a balance in all of these things. Privacy on what kind of credentials are shared. Convenience is number one uh, when we talk about the take up of the technology. Transparency or what this technology really means. Control that it has to be behind or be, uh, under the control of the individual and of course security that um, is the fundament of, of a digital identity. We have studied these in Estonia. We have our own split key smart ID solutions. We have uh, uh, electronic identity card solutions, SIM card solutions, etc., etc. This ecosystem needs to be strong. And finally, my point is business models. Let's let's not forget about business models. In in a lot of cases where we have seen the failure of uh, digital identities because of the of the failure of the business models. Let's open a debate on what is a successful business model on a digital identity. Thank you very much.